Welcome back students. We are now moving on to module three, which will be functions that I find are more intermediate level that will allow you to do some complex logic and some different data analysis, data lookup functions within your time using Excel. These functions relay the baseline, for my opinion, to being a very powerful analyst, whichever you decide to do in your field and career, all of these functions will definitely help you achieve your goals much better than if you didn't know them. So let's jump into them. This is gonna be the first part of this series where we'll go over a couple different functions and some practical exercises, and then it'll be a part two, and let's just jump into it. So let's hop over to the presentation really quickly. Not gonna be much here today. Just wanted to run you through um, the different functions that we'll be going over in this module. Today, like I said, going more in depth with functions and formulas, and we'll use these applications in the real world um, to see how they apply to certain specific scenarios that you might find um, when working. So hands-on, again, I'm using Windows, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at Matthew, N-G-U-Y-E 2023 at fau.edu. All right, so the functions and formulas we'll be going over in module three are this extensive list. Uh, feel free to look up some of these formulas and do some different digging on how you might find them to be useful. Um, but this is the, what I'm gonna be doing in these two videos. I expect these videos to be between um, 20 to 25 minutes. Uh, so let's jump into them and let's get started. Okay guys, let's hop into the workbook now. As you guys can see on the screen, we got a bunch of different functions here. Uh, we have 27 functions we're gonna be going over, actually 28, but let's jump right into it. Starting with the if s function. The if s function builds on top of the if function. It takes away the need to do nested if statements. So just like the if statement, in order to write the if s function, we write equals if s um, or ifs, whatever your cup of tea is for that. So the reason that we would do something like this is if we want to have multiple logical tests to determine a specific value. So in this case, we have a salary level here, and we want to know if this salary um, falls under some of these criteria outlined by the person who made this little matrix table to show us whether that person will live comfortably, will struggle, or live nicely. So we see here we have a salary of $30,000. Um, according to this table, um, no one makes $30,000, but let's just say we wanna evaluate another person uh, not listed in this table, and then we'll kind of go through this table to show you how you can use this to leverage if that person is living comfortably or not. So what we wanna see here is we wanna see um, the function for what it is. So we'll start writing it as this if S We'll say this will be the value of the cell that we're doing the logical test on. If this is greater or equal to this 100,000, then that person lives nicely. If C44 again is greater than or equal to this number, then they'll live comfortably. And then the last... C44, if it's less than this number, then they will struggle, according to this table. Now, let's click enter, and we'll see that this person will struggle. Now, if we want to apply this to a different number, let's change this to 150,000, then we know that this person lives nicely. Let's do another test. 75,000, we know that they will live comfortably according to this table. Now, if you want to apply this to this whole range, let's say we want to add another column, comfort, comfortability. Let's bold this. We'll say if S, this value is greater than or equal to this value, we'll lock this in that way we can pull it down, then the person will live nicely. We'll also lock this down. And then the same logic goes. If this value is greater than or equal to this value, we'll lock that into place. Then the person will live comfortably, lock this into place. And then again, if this value is less than this value, lock that into place, then the person will struggle, right? And as we see, if we pull this down, it'll update this entire 
column, right? So if we decide Matt starts to start making more money, we know that Matt will live nicely, right? That is the if s function. Let's move on to the and function or the and clause. And is not really a function. You can't just write and equal something. And has to be combined with an if statement. So let's say we have some potential hires and we have if they pass a skill test and they also have a degree. Now we have a different array of answers here. Let's get into this and see if this happens, if this works out. So we know that if they pass the test and they have the degree, they will be considered a qualified candidate. How do we write this? Okay guys, let's see if this candidate is qualified based on the AND clause. So we'll do if, instead of putting the, the logical test first, we'll write AND and we'll say if this is equal to yes and this is equal to yes, right? Close the parentheses. Then we know they are qualified, right? And if not, we know that they're unqualified. So let's close this out. We know that they're qualified. Now let's say we wanna take a look at Eric Fugel here. Let's see, we'll click yes. We know he passed the test, but he does not have a degree. So unfortunately he's unqualified. We can do the same here qualification. This is just an example here. So let's do this. We'll change this back to yes. You can either reference the cell um, there or you can reference uh, just the string yes or no. But we'll do it here. So we know that based on this company, these are the qualifications they have. They have to have passed the test and they have to have had a degree, right? So what we can do is we can write equals if and this is equal to this. Also, this is equal to this. We know that they are qualified. And if not, they are unqualified, right? So close the parentheses out here. Make sure you do that. Unqualified, let's pull this down. Actually. Let's lock this value in. So we know we wanna lock it, that way we can pull it down. We'll lock this, we'll lock this, click enter, unqualified, pull this down. We know that Thomas is qualified, right? So that's the and clause. Let's go over to the or clause. Now it's very similar to the and clause in which you feed it multiple clauses, but we know that with the or clause, it can be either one. So it's gonna be very similar. I have the formula already written out here. Now let's change this um, and apply it to the other hires that we have here, right? So again, I'm gonna bold this, command B. Um, so we know that if we were to change one of these, right? They'll still be qualified, but let's say they're not, they don't have either, then we know that they're unqualified. So let's delete out the qualified candidate here and let's apply this to the whole row qualification. So we're gonna write if or the logical test for this one, it's gonna be the same data. So we'll say if or they have passed the skill test. We'll lock this into place or they have a degree. We'll lock this one into place. Then they close these, then they are qualified. If not, they are unqualified, right? So that's that. We know that all of these candidates, because one of the clauses is correct, are qualified. Now let's say Thomas, all of a sudden, he lied on his skill test. He actually cheated. And he also does not have a degree. This will change to unqualified. So that's the or clause. Let's get to the count if. Count if is gonna be another conditional function. It's gonna be based on the counting of specific data uh, and related to a conditional clause. So. As you see, I'm gonna ask you guys these questions here. Now pause and try to do this on your own. See if you can get it done. Okay, since I didn't show you guys the count if function, I don't expect you guys to know it, but it's very simple. So like always equals count if. We're gonna have the range. So the range that we wanna count. Think about this. We wanna count how many have met their target, right? How many accounts had their tar had met their target? So we're gonna count this row, and our criteria is gonna be comma, 
oops, comma, target, net, right? Close this and we get eight. Now let's lock this into place. Lock this into place. Let's pull this down and let's change the criteria to target not met, right? So simple and easy as that. Now, as you guys know, in my other lectures, I always like to reference a specific cell. I don't like to write the string in here um, because sometimes, you know, if it's only two conditions, it's easier to do. But if there's a, a ton of conditions you're looking for, it might be easier to store those values in a specific uh, cell and then reference that cell. But for now, this will be okay. Now let's look at count ifs. So I'm gonna change this, this text back to a normal text size. Okay, so now we're saying these are company names, we have the firm type, we have the sales, and we have if they met their target sales goals. So we wanna count, again, the firms that were either private equity or hedge fund and how many of those met their target. So I'm gonna change this font back to 12. There we go, everything is good now. Okay, so let's do it. So as I said before, um, in this formula, I have target met or target not met in the string of the actual uh, cell, as a string in the actual cell. Um, but let's do it referencing some cells. So let's say we were given this as the question. I'm gonna throw a question mark here. And let's say this is the criteria, the target met, and we want to find private equity and hedge funds, right? So what we'll do is we'll say equals count ifs. Now criteria range and criteria one. So we know that the criteria range is just going to be the conditional range. We know that this is if they hit their target or not. Let's lock this into place. FNF4. And the criteria for this is going to say target met, right? Now... We don't want all of the ones that hit their target. We only want private equity firms. So what we'll do is we'll select this, same thing, FN. Now the second criteria, we're gonna reference this cell. As you can see, this would be a little bit easier to do if you decide you wanna change it. So let's say we wanna change this to investment banking or somebody wants to change it. Now it's easier to change rather than having to go back in this formula and type that string in. It's a little bit cleaner. And now we want to do the same thing, but for private equity. And the way that we have this set up at the moment, um, well, let's lock in this A106 because we know that's not going to change. But we want the B105 to change because we want it to say hedge fund, right? So let's pull this down and it works. Let's do a quick logic check to make sure everything's in place. So we know that if we do a, a, a quick filter here, and this is foreshadowing for the future, um, in class where we're gonna get into some different types of options like filters and whatnot, but let's do Control Shift L. We'll change this to target not met, or target met, okay? And let's change this to private equity. As you see, there's two firms that had met, had met their target that are private equity firms. Let's check hedge fund. Cool, worked out really well. Now let's be dynamic with the data and let's say this firm for whatever reason had false data and their sale reversed and we decide we wanna change it to target not met. Now this will automatically update here. So cool, dynamic, we'll change that back. Now let's get into the average if formula. Very similar to count if, it's gonna be a good formula to get the average based on conditions. And again, it's kind of foreshadowing to the future about the importance of conditional functions and how they might work. So let's look at an analysis of the, of the firms. So we have the same firms here um, and we have the firm types and we have their assets under management. I'm gonna come up in here and I'm going to include assets under management. For those of you who might not know, this just means how much money do, do, do these companies manage, right? These are all wealth management or private equity firms or broker dealers or any type of financial institution that manage money, could be a bank, et cetera. So that's how much money that they're managing, right? Okay, 
So let's say management comes to us, they want the average firm size for firms with assets under management under 1 billion, right? So again, I'm writing out the criteria here, it's gonna be 1 billion, and let's start the formula now. Now, there's some caveats to the average if and the sum if, but we're gonna get into that right now. So average if, normal, we're gonna find the range, right? We're gonna find the range that we wanna average. So we wanna average this range. Just for good practice, let's just lock this in, right? The criteria that we're gonna to wanna to use is that we want it to be greater than or equal to 126, right? But, but what Excel makes you do is put this actually into quotation marks, so greater than or equal to, right? Oops, oh, little mistake there. No, I don't want to end the formula. Cool. You put this in quotation marks, you're going to throw an ampersand here. So an ampersand, all this does is say that there's another value that's going to be added here. Okay, so greater than or equal to, all right? And we're going to throw the ampersand here, take out this extra quotation, and we're going to have it greater than this, right? Let's close this out, and we get this number. So let's say management wants to look at something that has that, that the average over 5 billion, right? So let's change this to a 5 right? And now we get this, right? We get this as the value, right? And then we can change this again. Let's say we only want to do like 900 million. That average will change, right? Change back to whatever it is. Let's just say if we want to average if it's greater than zero, that'll give us the whole average, right? But obviously we just use the average formula in that case. So I'll revert these back to that. And let's go on to average ifs. So average ifs, Average ifs is going to be the same thing as average if, except multiple conditions. So the same thing, management has given us a task, and I'm trying to lay this out so we can, you guys can all see this. Normally, it'd be look, it'd look a little bit, a little bit more um, intuitive. You might get, you know, an email or something, but just keep everything kind of in the same window. We're going to be doing it like this. So, average firm size for firms with assets under management greater than one billion. Okay, so let's do the average ifs formula. So the average range is gonna be this. The criteria range one is also gonna be this. Now let's go ahead and lock these into place because nothing's really gonna change in this formula. Remember, we're doing if it's greater than or equal to, right? One billion, right? Remember the ampersand, one billion. That's our criteria one. Criteria two will be the firm type, right? Let's lock this into place. And then we want to see private equity firms, right? So let's lock this into place. Let's close this out and let's click enter. Worked, right? Pretty cool. Now let's change this to hedge funds. Let's say we want to look at hedge fund. Boom. Change. Dynamic. Let's say we want to look at hedge funds under over five million, 500 million. So five, 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 five. Cool. That's 50 million. Okay. Cool. Nothing changes because... They're all the same, but let's let's look let's look over six six hundred million. Perfect, it changed. Awesome. So that worked out super well, and let's move on to the next formula. I'm gonna undo this. That way, it's all the same. There we go, and let's take a look at some if some if is gonna be our last formula for this video. I lied. We're gonna do some product too. So let's do some product and some if. Okay, so some if. Some if is gonna be the same as average if and count if, except there are a little bit of some nuances to some if that kind of throws people off, so let's get into it. Some if. So let's look at the formula here. I'm gonna delete out my responses, no cheating. Okay, so we wanna find the total sales from USA and EMEA, these being regions in our firm, right? Or in our company. So we want to find the total sales from these two companies. So let's sales, right? For these two types of, or these two regions, not companies, apologies. So sum if, right? The, the range is going to be the range that we want to look at, right? So we want to look at the territory right here, column D. Oops, some clicking issues here. For some reason, my Excel, whenever I click on a certain place, you'll see I'm trying to click here and it clicks on the, the one above, right? So I gotta 
Sometimes I just got to exit out of the uh, program. But anyways, I digress. We're going to lock this sum range, right? So that's our range. Or that's our range, not our sum range. Apologies. We're going to lock that range. Now, what's our criteria? Our criteria is going to be USA. And then we're going to leave this unlocked. That way we can pull it down. And our sum range is going to be the gross sales for these regions, right? So let's lock this back into place. Let's close this out. And let's pull it down. Awesome. Awesome. Works great. And that is it. So that's some if. Not hard. Everyone gets really tied up about some if, but it's not hard. I promise. Some ifs. A little harder. But let's do it. Weird formatting in the cells here. Let's change this formatting. I don't like when things are formatted weirdly. Perfect. So we want to know the total sales from companies from the... the um, from the country, USA, that are majority owners, right? So this is the profile that we were trying to look into, right? So what country are they in? I'm going to put a border around this just so you guys can see. I'm going to copy this down. So these are our two. Let's do a thick border. These are our two criteria, right? We want to find out these based on some ifs. So we want to know the total sales from country, USA, majority owner, yes, right? So we want to know all the, the sum of all the sales from the country, from the companies that are in the USA that are, that we are the majority owner in. So imagine we're a company that we have portfolio companies, which is companies that we own, and we want to find their total sales based on the ones that we have in the US, right? So let's take a look. That's the quick cheat code, but don't pause the video. Give it a try, actually, and see if you can solve it. Okay, so let's do it. Equals sum ifs. Let's do the sum range. The sum range, again, is going to be the range that we want to sum. Pretty, pretty intuitive there. Let's lock this, right? Now, the criteria range, right? What's the criteria range in this case? It's going to be this column D. We want to know. If they're in the USA or if we're a majority owner and if we're a majority owner, right? Those are our conditionals. Excel is being a little tweaky here. Let's, let's delete this out. Let's start again. Again, that cell is referencing the one above. So I got to click a little bit higher. Uh, let's click F4, right? That's our criteria range. Our criteria number one is the USA cell. Again, we can just write USA, but I like to keep things dynamic. So I like to reference cells, right? We're going to reference that. The criteria range number two is the majority owner column. So are we a majority owner or not? Again, you can write yes, and it'll work, right? I'll just click enter so you can see that. That'll work. But I don't like to do that. Let's reference a cell because maybe we want to see if it's a majority owner or no. And then we got to go into our big formula and change out that string, right? Or if there's 15 different types of values that could be in there, it could be kind of annoying. So Click enter, and that gives us that. All right, guys, let's get to some product. And then from some product, we are going to hop into another video where we're going to go over the rest of these intermediate functions for you guys. So let's get into it. So some product, some product, what it does is it multiplies an array of values and gives you the total product. So, for example, if we want to find out our gross profit, total revenues minus total expenses. We can either, you know, make the columns here and we can, we can add all these up, you know, we can do the sum and, 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 um, and do that, right? We can, we can, we can add a column like, like total cost, right? And we can do, you know, this unit sold times this, that would be the unit cost. And then we can find like the total revenue, right? by doing the same thing, except multiplying units sold by the price, price per unit, right? That we're selling it at, right? Or we can do a sum product. Now let's get into it. I'm gonna change this to sales price per unit because that seems a little confusing, sales price per unit. Okay, let's do it. So total revenue, instead of doing what we just did, we just do sum product some product. 
Now it's going to ask you for array one and array two. Now, if you remember, an array is just a, a, a range of data, right? So what's our array, array one? Our array one is going to be our units sold. Now we can either do a, a this, uh, a star sign, or we can do a comma. I'm going to do a comma here, but I'm going to show you how a star sign or multiplication side can be very helpful. So we know our total revenue is going to be our total units sold times our sales price per unit, right? We're going to close this out. And we're actually, in this case, we'll lock this, right? We'll lock array one because we know that's not going to change. So we'll lock this and click enter. That's our sum product, right? Now let's do a little bit of a logic check just to make sure it works. Total rev equals unit sold times sales price per unit. Let's pull this down. Let's do a sum of all this. Nice, it worked, right? Obviously it works, Excel is amazing. So now let's drag this down, right? But we know that it's not gonna move the, the column over, so let's just erase this. We know that the array one is gonna remain the same. Let's change the array two to this. We'll lock this into place. All right, so that worked. Try to lock it, and I think I closed out the page. Okay, perfect. Let's click enter. And now the gross profit would just be this, minus this, right? Gross profit not being too important of a concept. Oops, minus. So, enter. There we go. Cool. All right, guys. Let's do this last sum product. Um, this last sum product formula, and we will get into the ending of this video and get into the next. Okay, guys. So let's do the weighted average of these services. So let's start with the sum product formula. So we're gonna do sum product. So as you guys see, we have some services here. We have some different teams. We have the billable hours, the gross billing, and then the hourly wage. So let's do it. So we're gonna take the first array, multiply it by our hourly wage. That's gonna give us the uh, total uh, sum product for that. Let's divide this by the sum of the hourly wages. And that will give us our total average based on the hours that we build for these services. Now, let's say we wanna look at accounting and finance only and get the weighted average of these based on their values. What we're gonna do here, and this is uh, part of why some product is such a powerful formula, is because you're able to kind of compute some of these complicated uh, logical um, uh, some products of, of these arrays. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the same uh, arguments here, this, let's lock this into place and we're gonna do the multiplication sign here. We're not gonna do the comma, and you'll see why in a second. So we'll do this, get, oh, no, not that. We'll get this array, F4, right? And what we're gonna do here is instead of closing out the parentheses, we're going to multiply this where um, this array, right, equals a criteria. We're gonna lock this. Basically what that's saying is it's trying to get a narrowed down version of that sum product that we did earlier. And in order to get the weighted average, we're just gonna do another sum if formula like we just did before. The range again is gonna be this. We're gonna lock that into place. Uh, our criteria is going to be the accounting department and our sum range again is gonna be the billable hours for just the accounting related services. So we're gonna close this up, equals, and we should be able to pull this down to get us the sum product for finance. This might be useful for doing some weighted averages, so feel like um, if you wanna apply this to some concepts that a weighted average might be useful for, um, that's it, and really helpful. Next lesson, we're gonna get into some lookup um, functions and some other functions and close out intermediate functions for Excel. Thank you guys for watching this part of the intermediate functions part one in Excel. Let's get on to part two and continue working through some of these questions.